Special Counsel Jack Smith appears to be in the final stretch of his investigations into former President Donald Trump. Smith has been looking into the possible mishandling of classified documents and efforts to obstruct the 2020 election. Now, notable development this week, Tim Parlatore, one of Donald Trump's key attorneys, announced he is leaving the team. Now, in addition to working on the January 6th investigation, he also played a key role in the Mar-a-Lago documents probe, including organizing additional searches at Trump Tower, Bedminster, and an office in Palm Beach, as well as a Florida storage unit. Parlatore also appeared before the grand jury for several hours back in December. And Tim joins me now. Tim, thanks so much for being here with us. I think everybody wants to know, after the news this week, why did you leave the former president's legal team? So, as I said at the time, it had nothing to do with the case itself or the client. The real reason is because there are certain individuals that made defending the president much harder than it needed to be. Uh, in particular, there's one individual who works for him, uh, Boris Epstein, who had really done everything he could to try to block us, to prevent us from doing what we could uh, to to defend the president and ultimately it got to a point where it's difficult enough fighting against DOJ and in this case special counsel but when you also have people within the tent that are also trying to undermine you block you and really make it so that I can't do what I know that I need to do as a lawyer and when I am getting into fights like that that's detracting from what is necessary to defend the client and ultimately was not in the client's best interest, so I made the decision to withdraw. Infighting is certainly nothing new uh, in, in Trump world. Is there any specific incidents of something that he did to, as you say, prevent you from being able to properly represent your client? Oh, sure. I mean, there was, he served as kind of a, um, a filter to prevent us from getting information to the client and getting information from the client. Uh, in my opinion, he was not very honest with us or with the client on certain things. Uh, there were certain things like the searches that he had attempted to interfere with. And then more recently, as we're coming down to the end of this investigation where Jack Smith and ultimately Merrick Garland is going to make a decision as to what to do, as we put together our defense strategy uh, to help educate Merrick Garland as to how best uh, to handle this matter, he was preventing us from engaging in that strategy. Uh, you said that Boris tried to prevent you from conducting searches. What searches are those? Th this is the searches that, at uh, Bedminster um, initially. Uh, there was a lot of pushback from him where he didn't want us doing the search, and we had to eventually overcome him. Why didn't he want you doing the search? I don't know. Uh, you know, Boris is, uh, you know, he is a lawyer. He spent about 18 months at a big firm doing transactional work, and I think he just thinks based on my experience, he knows better than all of us. So you previously testified before the grand jury back in December. Yes, Since you've left, some people have speculated that you couldn't represent the former president because you're a witness. What is your response to that? You know, that, unfortunately, it, it has a lack of understanding as to what actually happened there. So first of all, I was not subpoenaed. What that was is the original subpoena to the office of the former president. They wanted a custodian of records to come and appear. Uh, they really wanted somebody, a staffer from down in Palm Beach, to come in and talk about, you know, what searches were done so that they could beat them up. And ultimately, there wasn't really a good person on the staff to send, so we made the decision, I made the decision, to go in myself and to face the prosecutors and to actually speak directly to the grand jury and explain to them what was really going on here. So as, as I went in and I talked about what we as a legal team had done, in searching all the properties, that doesn't make me a, you know, a material witness or anything like that. So there's no conflict, there's no issue where you know, I, I would expect to ever be called back in there. In fact, there were a couple of opportunities where I offered to come back, the prosecutors didn't want me back. So um, it, it really has nothing to do with that. So you recently sent a letter with the other attorneys on the legal team to the House Select, the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. Yes. And one of the arguments that you make is the reason these documents ended up in Mar-a-Lago is mm -hmm. because at the end of any administration, particularly this one, it's chaotic. And specifically, you said that uh, the fact that these ended up down at Mar-a-Lago is, quote, indicative of the staff's packing process and not any criminal intent by former President Trump. 
The problem is the former president, his allies, and even at least one of your fellow attorneys have all publicly contradicted that explanation for how these things ended up down at Mar-a-Lago. I think there are at least four official explanations that they've put down about the status of these documents. I'm going to go through them chronologically. Sure. Starting shortly after the search warrant was executed down at Mar-a-Lago, some of the former president's allies came out and said that he had issued a sweeping declassification order on multiple occasions so the documents removed from the Oval Office were deemed declassified when he removed them. Did you ever see any evidence of any such order? I, I never saw the order um, itself. Uh, yeah, that would not be something that we would have access to uh, if, if it was a written order as opposed to an oral, oral order, so I did not see that. So the former president then, a couple weeks later, said this to Sean Hannity. If you're the president of the United States, you can declassify just by saying um, it's declassified, even by thinking about it. So the letter says that he wasn't really aware of these documents being placed because it was chaotic. They, they all were shipped down to Mar-a-Lago. How can you declassify something with your mind if you don't know that it's in one of these boxes? These are two unrelated concepts. So there's the issue of classification or declassification, which is separate and apart from the issue of document management and what goes into boxes. And one of the things that we were uh, trying to explain there is that the processes that are in play in the White House, in the Oval Office, they don't match the same uh, level of you know, care, if you will, that are done in the intelligence agencies and in the military. And so marked documents, whether classified or declassified, and unclassified documents get mixed in. And now this is not just about when packed up to leave. This is about the four years while they're in office. Now, since we submitted this letter, we found out that the archivist has testified that every administration going back to Reagan has had the exact same issue. That's really what we were talking about there. So the procedures for declassification is a separate issue from how these boxes were packed and how the documents were kept during that four years. Now, we know from CNN reporting this week that Jack Smith, the special counsel, is interested in this process and especially how much your former client knew and understood about the process. Here's what one of your fellow attorneys who signed this letter, Jim Trusty, told Aaron Burnett earlier this week. He is aware of a bureaucratic process that can be used, but at the end of his presidency, he relied on the constitutional authority as commander in chief, which is to take documents and take them to Mar-a-Lago while still president, as he was at the time, and to effectively declassify and personalize them. He talked about declassifying them, but he didn't need to. So it appears that he's saying that during the presidency, uh, former President Trump followed the process for declassifying, but towards the end of his presidency, he did not. Does that contradict what you guys told Congress? It doesn't, because again, we're talking about document management, not declassification. And when it comes to all the declassification procedures, one thing you have to remember, when you get a security clearance, particularly a top secret security clearance, you get all of the training and all the forms you have to fill out and agreements to sign. Presidents don't get that. Elected officials, they don't have security clearances. They gain access to this material simply by virtue of the fact that they were elected. And so when you're the president, you're not the one who's actually going in the logbook and doing all of the entries to declassify something. You're just saying to your staff, hey, this document here I want declassified. Then you kind of take it with you. Now, should the staff have followed certain procedures? Sure. But again, declassification procedures is one of the things that we were not dealing with in this letter. And in fact, I even put a footnote in there that we weren't dealing with declassification, simply document management, moving, storage, and what narrow procedures are upon the administration change uh, with the Presidential Records Act. So we're talking about the presidential records, so records yep. that are created during the administration that Correct. belong to the government and should mm -hmm. be returned, and then also classified documents. It appears there were both in the boxes that went down to Mar-a-Lago. Last question before we break for a minute. Is there any evidence that the former president declassified the classified documents that were found in those boxes? The problem is that we don't have an inventory of what those documents are to be able to chase that down. So once DOJ gives an inventory so that we would know actually what's in there, then that's something we could chase down. So it's kind of shooting in the dark. We don't know what they are, and so we can't follow the paper trail about declassification.